if you're interested in what I would have presented, you can ask me uh, during lunch. Um, I hope you st still are patient for another 10 minutes of Schematron, and then we will wrap up this session. Okay, seems to work. I think it's better to stand in the spotlight, at least if it's for four minutes or so. Um, uh, again, as the day before yesterday and yesterday and today, what I've heard is all very, very interesting and we could discuss for hours. Um, my little talk is just a quick report from reality and um, I noticed on the, the day before yesterday that um, the preconditions in a uh, content management system are way less fancy. Uh, people don't see angle brackets there. They have an editor, which is basically something like author mode. They, s they usually opt to see the tags, but it's just like little images, so they don't see the full XML and all its quality. They handle this. They use drag and drop, and they enter text, and they just do s kind of simple things. And also, most of the cases, they know their XML schema or a DTD that they are using. Um, that is the company, I jump over this. Um, and a few years ago, when we adopted Schematron as an addition um, to uh, what we are um, offering our users to enable them to improve their content, because that is, that is key for all automation. Like all the, uh, sometimes I call our company an XML company, sometimes I talk about an automation company, but because in the end it's all batch production of content. So you have to rely on the quality of the XML that is in the content management system. So we never allow anything that is not validated into the content management system. But um, uh, so that is a, a, a given prerequisite, but uh, the problem comes uh, right next. Um, initially, when we developed this, we offered training on Schematron, how to use it. Uh, I mean, basically, it's an XPath training or an XPath workshop, and the initial adoption was quite slow. The people were, most probably it was too complicated for them, or they did not understand, or we did not communicate the benefits enough. Um, and when we started to offer a training on the job, that is a workshop with a dedicated customer with exactly their problem, not a generic stuff. Just that is your DTD, that is your XML schema, and that is your problem, how to deal with that. And then they learn by example. And after a three-hour workshop or so, then usually they can go on their own if there's at least one person that is technically savvy enough to kind of get an initial grasp of XPath. Since we have an XPath search in our tools, they detected that already and may have some experience with that. The use cases that they use Schematron rules for is the, I, I looked at a few rules that we have uh, on file with our, in, our, in our company is primarily to disallow legacy structures. Our customers usually had a content management system before or they have existing documentation before, and when uh, they uh, come aboard, they, in many cases, there's unfortunately a migration project. They bring content over. They cannot rework everything. So the XML schema that we use, and we are flexible, we support any schema, any DTD, um, has usually some elements, some uh, contributions which are too weak for a modern world, but to take over the existing content to, to publish it, it's quite a necessity. So we always weigh these, weigh these factors. Uh, another important thing is that usually different groups work in the same company. They use the same XML schema or DTD, but they have different requirements for the output formats. For instance, if you create data sheets, you might not want to use as deeply structured uh, content as if you do a manual, where you allow lists of uh, maybe level three or level, we have a customer support team on one customer, they go, um, they use lists down to level four. But all the other groups with user manuals, they only want the maximum of two levels of lists, but it's a recursive uh, list model, so you can have, you can, the, the data is valid until level whatever you can think of. So we have to stop them from doing that because um, uh, the, the, the formatting instructions only support so and so many um, indents um, in the lists. Um, as one of our output formats is Microsoft Word, and you probably are aware that Word has no knowledge of ignorable white space. So that if by accident you have some leading white space, 
tools like Antenna House Formata are XML savvy. They can drop that. Uh, if you publish the same thing in the direction of Word, then we try to alert users that they have white space and unwanted locations. And so basically, uh, and the last one is uh, mitigating failures in, in, XML, in, in schema or DTD design is a, a, a thing we, we see quite often. Um, because once you have implemented it, uh, chances are someone has used this, even though they shouldn't do. And um, instead of kind of going through all the content and trying to fix this, sometimes it's easier to use this schema subsetting um, and using a schema trend rule. And it's, um, it's, it's, it's tightly integrated in the tool. And if we flag a schematron finding as an error, they cannot check it into the database. So a warning is just an annoyance. But if it's an error, it's treated as if the content is not valid according to the, specific, according to the XML schema, for instance. So it's really a hard, really a hard border um, to block you, uh, people from inserting that. So that is just a kind of, it's, a, it's um, two real world examples from one customer. Um, the first one, it just says, if you find a heading inside something which is called text, um, um, there should be nothing, no element in front of the heading. So that's fairly obvious. Uh, from my point of view, that is just a, a, a schema error. That should never have been allowed. So, the, the details are usually more complex, and there is a reason why this is the case, but now they want the heading to be the first thing in its container, in the text container. That's, a, that's easy. But the same team at the same customer, after such a workshop I described earlier, we discussed the solution with, uh, as you can see, the um, rather complex rule. Um, I'm, I'm not going into details, but you can see that they are not refraining from using more complex context constructs or even using XPAR 3.1 rules in, in, in the test attribute. Um, if, if that's just, otherwise, you can't just um, describe it, so you use the tools um, um, that are available. And I have to confess that I um, learned a lot of uh, query binding today, and um, we, did, we just actually don't care. It's XSLT2 in each of our scripts, but since everything is handled in Saxon PE 9 something in the back end, it just accepts XPath 3.1 because it can, and so it does. But we will, we will fix this and try to be more standards compliant. One thing we lo noticed in the very beginning is as we have an, as we have an editor, which uh, primarily you see the elements, but um, the, the attributes are in a different view, and you see the text content, and also what, um, what Ken was referring to, how to, how to enter the content, how to make it more approachable for non-programmers. One thing, from my point of view, would be why is in Schematron, why is all the good thing hidden in attributes? This was also the question regarding query languages. If, for instance, the, the test uh, itself, the, the X query with this language binding, um, would be element content. Then you could have as well XML as kind of the query. So um, it just, uh, from my point of view, it makes it a little bit harder for users. Users have to go into an XML editor in text mode and enter all the attributes and um, do the right thing. It would equally um, be possible to put all these um, context information, the condition, how we called it in, uh, in, in, in some um, earlier implementation, to put that as, take that as PC data. And um, if, you, if you look closely, we had a recursion here. Though, so we can have a context, um, we, we do a test, and then we have if true, if false, and underneath the if true and false, we can have another test. So that is also something that is um, not kind of readily available. You just have to create more elaborate context in, in, in Schematron. But we could, but we haven't done this, we could kind of create something like that and then pre-process it into regular Schematron. That is, would, would, be no, would be no problem. But um, this is kind of, um, and from my point of view, um, that would make Schematron more, there's no chance that this will happen. I'm, 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 I'm totally uh, fine with the existing solution, but that would have made adoption for non-programmers, from my point of view, a little bit easier. So, but that's, um, um, well, it's a decision some 20 years ago, and we live with that. It's, it's the same with the, with the stuff that some of us don't like on XML, like uh, the single root element and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's been around for 20 years. We can live with that. It doesn't block us from doing good things. So that was just um, the last uh, stumbling block before the, 
um, lunch. And so, um, from my point of view, thank you very much for the conference. Um, I will be around at lunch in case you want to discuss uh, further things with uh, me or my colleagues, and, and I hope to see that we see each other again next year and the year after next year in London and or in Prague. Thank you very much. Yes, so lunch is called, I, I heard lunch is calling. Um, thank you very much for yeah. being here. Um, this was the fifth uh, Schematron users meetup uh, in Prague. I hope we will see you next year at Markup UK or in two years at the next XML Prague conference or on any of the other conferences that will be this year. Thank you very much. Okay, so there will be lunch in the same location in, as, is, as in past two days and we will meet here uh, shortly before half past two and there will be session by Stephen Pemberton about making some magic, making invisible and XML. So you can learn in more detail how to write and process IXML. So enjoy your lunch.